Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. The weather has been very unusual here. Last night, we had terrible thunderstorms. A tornado or several tornadoes touched down in Fort Worth, Texas, as well as Louisiana. We had winds up to 45 miles an hour. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing in the garden this week and let you see how my garden looks. Okay, I think I thoroughly covered what I'm going to go over. Let's go ahead on and go outside. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. Here are the little tools that I had to uh, prick out the seedlings. From these many greenhouses i couldn't find it the other day but thank goodness i found it this morning so i'm going to continue what i was doing in the last video and i'm going to transplant some greens okay there's a plane flying over here but i'm going to talk about so i hope you guys can hear me here's a close-up of the mustard spinach greens that brian and i transplanted day before yesterday I think okay and you can see over here that the Bloomsdale spinach is doing good I'm gonna put another couple of them right here maybe one there and I'm gonna save this area for some onions these are the strawberries and spinach and I'll put a onion or two right here Yeah, that should As work. You can see right here, I planted uh, giant red mustards, and I plan to put some marigolds in here as well. Let me go a little slower. And let me just give you a pearl from Lady Cheryl. Try to transplant your seedlings on a cloudy day. So that'll give them a little time to adjust okay so i'm gonna pan up here and let you see that it has been raining and it's real cloudy and so they'll be sitting in this position all night and then as it warms up tomorrow it won't be such a shock to the seedlings over here i'm gonna rake this soil up a little bit add a little compost to it and then I'll plant something else. I want to share something with you. You can see some kale survived. And I'm going to leave it here. I'm just going to pinch off the damaged uh, leaves and put them in the compost. And right here, these are marigolds coming up. Right there. So I won't plant anything close to there, but I'll put something right here. And what I decided to plant is Swiss yard. So I'll be back when it's done and I'll show it Okay, to you. I was able to plant all of the rainbow Swiss chard in here. I left some space again in the front for onions, marigolds, or garlic. I'd like to interplant my crops so that I have some repellents near them. And if you're new to my channel and you're wondering what this is, it's a sensor. It's a thermometer and hydro monitor that I have the base in my bedroom. And I have three of these out here. And that way I know what the temperature is at all times. Okay, let's go get another box. When you're planting your garden, be sure to make sure you add some things that will bring color to your garden and it's just a beautiful feeling to just sit out here and watch the bees and the butterflies feast off of your plants and especially if you're trying to germinate something so i'll be planting a lot of these zinnias the heirloom zinnias i'm going to be planting them in this space right here and when these uh two um 
curly kale get pulled up. There's actually three of them. I'll put two tomato plants in here. So the zinnias would draw in pollinators. I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, that's enough for now. Some of them are gonna be thinned out and moved to other areas. The spacing right here is really good in the back, but I just put, picked up, you know, solid blocks of soil and just put these down here because I wanna put some marigolds in here as well. Okay, the secret to successfully gardening, uh, you know, when you're a senior citizen, I'll be 69 this summer, is to don't try to overwork. Don't try, try to do too much, okay? Just slow and easy, a little at a time. So that's it for today. I'll be back to add more footage to this vlog on tomorrow. It's Thursday afternoon. The high will be 79 degrees, and we're going to get some rain. And I'm getting ready to plant some free sunflowers. I got the seeds from Botanical Interest. And as you can see, I had put them in peat pellets. The roots are going growing through here and they're, the leaves are discolored. They need more nutrition. So it's time to get them in some soil. So I think I'm gonna put, uh, I have six of them and I'm gonna put um, one right here and I'll, I'll uh, harvest these greens as they get a little bit bigger. This is Swiss yard that I transplanted yesterday. And then I'm going to plant one about right here. And I think that'll look really nice against the backdrop of the neighbor's fence. Okay, I'll be back and show you what I did. I told you guys that I was gonna put some onions, companion plant onions. Now, when you look at a video, it looks like it's not a lot of space there, but it actually is. And right here, I'm gonna put some onions. So I tr uh, transplanted them with Bria less than 10 days ago. And they're growing really good roots, as you can see here. And I'm just gonna put some of them around my strawberries to repel insects, especially slugs, S-L-U-G-S. My green angels are in school, so they're not videotaping me. And the wall right here hinders me from putting a tripod uh, in front of me. So I just wanna show you with one hand how I just push the soil back Look how many roots and how vigorous they have grown in just a short amount of time. Now make sure I get all the roots down in there, like so, and then just close it up with soil. Pressing down. So I have one, two, three, four, and I probably can get one more right here yeah i'll plant one more right there just pushing the soil back i have to go get me an onion and i'll drop it in there so here's the onion that i removed from the onion grow box and i'm just going to push it and put it right in here and then just close it up with some soil and the strawberries and spinach will just grow right around this onion. And if you're wondering, I just want you to know that I've been gardening in Texas for about 39 years, over 45 years I've been gardening. And everything that I'm showing you is not an experiment. It's something that I did before. You know what guys, look over here. Look at this onion. I thought I had counted enough, but I didn't see where I laid it down. So, I'm gonna look for a little spot right where these strawberries are growing. So I can keep the bugs off of the strawberries. I'm gonna put an onion right there. Keep the slugs off the strawberries. Uh, squirrels and cats, they don't like the onions either. Now, it, somebody always tell me, well, I, they ate in my onion bed. There are exceptions to the rules, guys. Nothing is 100% is, uh, accurate. So let's show you what I've gotten in here now. I've got Swiss chard, a little collard green, 
and a sunflower right there in the middle. And over here, I have my giant red mustards and the sunflower toward the edge of this bed right here so it could act for both of them. And I have some zinnias. And here's some beautiful kale that uh, withstood 10 degree temperature when I covered it. And then when we had the second freezing days, the lowest temperature I believe was 19. I didn't cover anything. Okay, so we have Bloomsdale spinach, which is gonna look like this. And you can see it coming in with its second set of leaves right there. And over here, we have mustard spinach, which is my favorite greens. And I have a discolored sunflower because it was in the peat pellet. There's no nutrition, but it'll start getting some nutrition very soon and it'll color up. Okay, over here, I have more mustard spinach that I have left over. And what I really like about the pricking tools is the fact that I can just pick up the whole um, block of soil with the seedlings in it uh, without disturbing it, like you make soil blocks. You can Google that if you don't know what those are. But anyway, this is too dense in here, but it's okay because I'm gonna be cutting off a lot of these leaves. And then I took the leftover Bloomsdale spinach and put it back here. And over here, I put the rest of the red mustards, okay? And then over here, I have my uh, discolored sunflower in the middle. I'm, I added some compost right here. I'm gonna add some more uh, potting mix. And then I'm gonna plant turnips and marigolds all in here. But I'm holding off on the marigolds because the National Weather Center says that we're not gonna get any snow or freezing temperatures until March 16th. And the Farmer's Almanac says we will be out of danger from a frost or freeze on March 20th. So I'll just keep watching the forecast and I will plant accordingly. For example, I'm not gonna put too many of the zinnias out right now in case we get a uh, cold front that comes out of nowhere because it, it'll fr it can't handle uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or lower and I'm not going to plant too many marigolds, sweet peppers, hot peppers, or tomatoes. I'm going to keep them in the containers like right over there that's over there on the table. I'll probably pop them up into uh, solo cups or whatever I have because I do keep some leftover containers and I'll keep them close to the house should I have to bring them in if we have an emergency freeze. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead on and get the uh, turnips. Okay guys, the turnips look a little too fragile in my opinion to be moving them. So we're getting ready to get some rain uh, all the way uh, up until um, tonight. So I think I'm just going to put them right there. They'll be in a good spot for um, the wind. We're going to have high winds, 20 miles an hour. So I'll just leave this stuff here. And I think what I'm going to do next is take a break. And when I come back, I'm going to drop some of the peat pellets that have lettuce in them into these uh, hanging baskets. This one is fine. And you know, I forgot to show you the lettuce over here in the last video. Uh, I showed you the red lettuce, but I didn't show you this one. Okay. Lettuce doesn't have deep roots. So in this cement mixing uh, bowl, tray, whatever you want to call it, I put my butter crunch lettuce. Now guys, I didn't divide the butter crunch lettuce. I'm going to tell you why. Because they will start bolting you know, the end of June, around Independence Day, they're going to start bolting and go to seed because it'll be too hot down here in Texas, uh, North Texas. Over here, you can see, this is my tat soy that was in peak pellets and I divided them as nice as I could or easy or gentle as I could because they're gonna grow real big, okay? But again, the roots are gonna be shallow. So I'm gonna put three in a row. 
okay? And they're going to be plenty kind of close together because they also are not a uh, hot weather cop crop. They're cool weather crops, tat soy, all your pop choy, all those. Those are like in the cabbage family and they are going to bolt when it gets real hot down here. And so, as you can see here, I'm just putting them uh, about four and a half inches apart. It doesn't look like that on the video, but if you know anything about videotaping, everything appears to be smaller than what it actually is. So, I'm just picking up some, trying to be careful. And if I have any left, I'll find some place where to pop them in. And um, just about done. That's it. And here is some pansies and look like they seeded themselves right here. I'm going to put a little hole right here and put this last few pieces of tat soy, rainbow tat soy. And I'll put another one right there. <clears throat> I think I can get one right here these two little bitty ones. Well, I'll just put one there and one right in here. But the pansies, these are um, biannual and these came back from the dead. <laughs> you know, obviously the roots weren't dead, but the plants all died back. So this is really good. I'm gonna stop and just show you over here that I did put that uh, black seeded Simpson lettuce right in here. And I'll pop a marigold in there pretty soon. And I'm gonna stop right now because it's getting real cloudy and it's getting ready to rain up until about seven, eight o'clock. So I'll come back tomorrow. So this is what I have left. For those of you that are new to my channel, I winter sold all these seeds. Okay, and I, I drill holes in the bottom with a sorting gun and in the top for drainage. And since we're supposed to be under a thunderstorm watch, I'm going to go ahead on and put the tops back on them because they're very wet already. And I love these little plastic shoe boxes because you can see the vigorous root system right there in the plastic. Okie dokie. We had a real bad storm last night. Thank goodness we didn't have any tornadoes, but winds were up to 45 miles an hour uh, during a brief period. I said I got some damage over there to that umbrella. There were a few things, you know, thrown around in the yard, but uh, everything looks pretty good. I'm very blessed. Remember, I covered these up, the greenhouses, because I knew the storm was coming in. So I'm taking the tops off and letting them get some air so they can dry out so that they can keep growing. And um, I'm going to be potting up some of them and transplanting some others. These are the sorted tomatoes. They won't go in the ground because they need much more protection. They'll go into pots. I see the marigolds one, two, and three is looking pretty good. And so right here are zinnias. Okay. And I think this must be the, what do you call them, morning glories. I need to get the rest of these into some containers. I'm gonna grow them in some uh, hanging baskets. I'll come back a little bit later um, in the afternoon and get some work done. Thanking God that things are not as bad as it 
could have been. Before I go in, I'm going to walk back and let you see the plant. See the pillows on the furniture. I got tossed around. You know, ground is real soggy. I need to put on my boots. But uh, this looks pretty good. So obviously we didn't have uh, hail damage. I see my little owl. I just straightened up that aisle. O-W-L. Everything's looking good that was transplanted. The Bloomsdale spinach and the onions. Looking good. And over here we have mustard spinach. Looking good. More mustard spinach. More Bloomsdale spinach. Uh, we've got some giant let me be careful i gotta walk real careful so i don't slip and fall we've got some uh giant red mustard greens and here i planted some arugula so that's pretty good and this is where the turnips are gonna go and i put a a brick on top of this to weigh it down because it wasn't the right top. So those are the turnips. I'll probably get those transplanted today. And the black seeded lettuce and the chat soil. Let me go out. That looks so pretty. Looking good. And we have some more chat soy. That's looking good. See if I can get this one in a little bit deeper. So it can start standing up. There we go. And we have more lettuce over here. And lettuce there with Dianthus. And of course, garlic look good there's nothing laying down as well as the onions i don't know if i showed you the sage made it through the winter and uh more kale made it through uh real soon i'm gonna take you on a tour of the whole garden space uh and show you everything Bria and I are getting this order ready so that we can ship it. And we always take pride in our orders. Right, Bria? Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.